Welcome to this daily office with the Iona community, which is taken from the Iona Abbey Worship Book. The service is taken from the form of morning prayer which we use on Iona, and so there are different prayers and psalms each day, and, over the course of each month, a cycle of prayers for the world, for different communities and for the concerns of the Iona community. The form of words on some of the slides has been changed to reflect a recent update. The service is interactive and you're invited to join in with the responses. You'll see all the words you need on the screen. The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. How good it is, how wonderful to, to live, live together in unity. Love and faith come together. Justice, Justice and peace join hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these, these stones would shout, shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Move among us, God, give us life. Let, Let your people rejoice in you. Give us again the joy of your help. With, With your spirit of freedom sustain us. God, make our hearts clean. Renew us in body, mind and spirit. Let us pray. Trusting in God's forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life, the lives of others and the life of the world. May, May God, God forgive you, Christ, Christ renew you, you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in, in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. So now, as Jesus taught us, we say, Loving God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. With the whole church, we affirm, we affirm that, that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we, we affirm, affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. Hurry, God, and save me. Come quickly, come to my aid. Confuse the devious plans of those who want to hurt me. Let those intent on harming me be dishonoured and exposed. Let those who jeer and gloat be shamed into silence. Sustain all those who seek you. Fill them with joy and gladness. Let those who long for your help cry, Glory, glory to God. Meanwhile, remember me, God. I need to know you are there. Hurry to help and save me, for you are my only deliverer. God, do not delay. Listen now in the reading of Scripture for the Word and Wisdom of God. This reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 to 42, using the First Nations Indigenous translation. When they heard this, the words pierced their hearts like a long knife. With troubled hearts, they lifted their voices up to Peter, who stands upon the rock and to all the other message bearers. Fellow tribal members, they said, tell us what we must do. Cheer thinking, Peter, who stands upon the rock, instructed them, and participate in the purification ceremony that is done in the name of Jesus, the creator who sets us free, the chosen one, representing him and initiating you into his right ways. You will then be healed from your bad hearts, released from your broken ways and gifted with the Holy Spirit, who will give you the strength to walk the good road. This is promised to all generations of the tribes of Israel who wrestle with the Creator, to all the nations who live far away, for the Great Spirit, our Creator, is calling out to all who will to share in this life of beauty and harmony. Peter, who stands upon the rock, said many more things to the ones who were listening. With strong words, he kept telling them, This is how you will be set free and rescued from the bent and twisted ways of this generation. The ones who believed the words of Peter, who stands upon the rock, became a part of the Creator's new sacred family and participated in the purification ceremony. About 3,000 people were added to the family upon that day. And this newly formed family continued daily to learn from the 12 message bearers. And they lived together in harmony, ate ceremonial meals and prayed with one another. For the word of God and scripture and other wellsprings of nourishment for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Despised, but.
Jesus told many stories. This one was a strange one. I remember bits of it from Sunday school. They called it the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Virgins, you understand, meant young women. The emphasis was on being prepared. The guides and the scouts were on the right lines there then. On being good and helpful because God is always watching you, and you need to be ready to come running when he calls. My dad was strong on the next story in the Bible about using your talents, all good Protestant work ethic stuff. You've been given gifts and opportunities, don't waste them. Ability brings responsibility. Always do your best. The Methodism I grew up in emphasised the last story in this chapter, the sheep and the goats one. Act justly, care for those who need your help, and when you do that, you live for God. So when I come back to this story as an adult, I come not only with life's experience, but also with layers of memory and messages from childhood, which are part of who I am. What hits me first is the selfishness of the wise young women 
whose oil, according to many commentators, might well have enabled all the lamps to burn brightly. But they weren't willing to risk sharing it, and they kept it for themselves. And who, I ask, is this arrogant bridegroom, who arrives hours late and excludes those who are disadvantaged by his behaviour? Experience prompts me to ask the question, whose voice is missing from this story? The bride, how did she feel when some of the guests were not allowed to come to her wedding? Were they her friends, her family, her neighbours, these women shut out in the dark? Had her groom consulted her before he barred the door? Theologically, what do I learn from this story? That God favours those who have enough time and money to stock up on what they might need, whilst those who live day to day will no way make God's grade. Or that God is always waiting to catch us out, and when he does, he'll pretend he never knew us, never loved us, never heard our prayers. I think not. I want to rewrite this story. In my version, the bride is waiting just inside the open door for her guests, and when they arrive, she gives them a hug and welcomes them to the feast. The guests are a real mixed bunch, rich and poor, sad and happy, homemakers and adventurers, old and young. The party goes on for hours, and when the oil runs out, she asks her groom to go down to the shops and get some more. And he does. And when all the lamps are lit, the couple make their promises in the midst of their guests to care for each other, to risk loving, to act justly, and to welcome the God of love and of strangers into their lives. I don't think they'll be teaching my version in Sunday schools, but it might make Jesus, the guest of saints and sinners, smile. Jesus the storyteller, it's a joy to listen to you, to laugh, to cry, to ask questions, to be filled with sense and wonder. Tell me your stories, all the nights and days of my life, and let your words come alive and dance in me. Amen. On the 11th day, we pray for the Iona community's work with young people, youth workers, Iona community youth networks, and the young adults group. and for the Mac houses. And we pray for the countries of Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Iceland, and Greenland. And we pray for the members belonging to the family group of Edinburgh South, James Black and Chris, Walter Dunlop and Jennifer, Alan Gordon and Betty, Stuart McGregor and Chris, Mike Miniter, Charles Orr, Martin Scott and Jane Scott. On the 11th day of this month, we pray for associate members in Australia and Otaioroa, New Zealand.
and also for associate members in the Middle East. Walk with them today, O God, and keep us on your way. God, in whose heart is love and justice, show us this day whom we must love and what we should challenge or change in order that your will for the earth might be done. Increase our hope, dispel our apathy, inspire our imagination and deepen our commitment until we become the signs of your kingdom for which we and others pray. Amen. This is the day that God has made. We will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. Go in peace to love and to serve. We, we will, will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God, God in community, holy and one.